All right, everybody, welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. We are about to go into our second dungeon, which is the Tamtara Deepcroft. Uh, it is located in Central Shroud, which is outside of Gridania, which is an area that I haven't really shown too much of to you guys. But um, anyway, here it is on the map. Um, and uh, this dungeon is level 16 to level 19, I believe is the level sync range. So still not in range of um, the next job quest, so I didn't bother leveling up beyond level 19. Because um, anything I got at level 20, I wouldn't really be able to use it. But anyway, I'm um, going to go ahead and queue in here. I went ahead and upgraded my gear just a little bit more. Um, I really can't understate the uh, importance of keeping your gear up today as a tank. Um, Because, uh, you know, every every piece of gear you're wearing that isn't the highest you can get it is just going to make the run that much more likely to, you know, potentially have complications. Um, so, I just didn't want to take any risks. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. Why, why, why are you doing this? I, I don't... I already gave me these tutorials, I thought. Oh, there's a do it. Oh wow, I'm already unlocked the duty roulette. I didn't realize that I don't. I don't remember it unlocking that soon. Yeah, once you unlock more than one instance of a particular kind of, uh, of be they dungeons or raids or trials, um, you get a corresponding roulette that you can run every day for experience, and um, it'll basically it's like a roulette between well just these two dungeons right now, but. Um, the cool thing about it is that it offers an experience bonus and it also gives you an additional experience bonus if you meet the adventure and need requirement which is usually tank um, so I'm going to go ahead and queue into Tamatara and we'll uh, I'll say that I'll cut and uh, if the queue pops immediately then I just I won't cut fuck it Alright, I don't think I'm going to cut anything out there. It was a little bit longer than last time. Last time was like a second. This time it was like five seconds. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. Anyway, so this time around I, I brought in some different cross-class abilities. I brought in uh, internal release, keen flurry, which increases parry rate from Lancer, and um, brought Featherfoot back. I brought these back this time because they have shorter cooldowns. And we have a white mage this time, so um, that is the corresponding job to Conjurer, which is the healer that we had last time in Sestasha. So this healer is a little bit going to have a little bit beefier uh, stats and um, abilities generally. But uh, all right, man, slow down. Slow down, buddy. Oh, God. So right when I pulled there, I used Fight or Flight for some extra DPS and Rampart for some extra mitigation. And um, generally, you, um, you know, trash pulls, especially if you're not doing, if you're not chain pulling, if you're not pulling multiple packs, don't need too much mitigation. A healer can generally handle them. But the thing is, if you do pop, you know, a little something, a little something extra, uh, it can only help, really. So while it's not necessary and it's not necessarily saving your life, if you've got a healer that's willing to pump out some DPS, you can encourage them to do that by taking even less damage, you know? Um. So 
so we have an we have a thaumaturge in the party right now. Um, which is the uh, where the fire spells are coming from, although they're not really doing the most <laughs> they're not really doing the best rotation. They're spamming ice spells. Which uh you know, certainly makes my job easier, I guess. Uh, things are dying a lot slower, but at least I don't have to worry about aggro or anything. <laughs> it's funny to say that and be on Gladiator. Where are they? Okay. Sometimes I, I like to, you know, just wait for people and just make sure that... You know, we're all on the same page. So the cross-class abilities I brought with me this time, uh, Keen Flurry, Featherfoot, and Internal Release have much shorter cooldowns, so I'll get to use them a little bit more often, even though they're not as powerful as the ones that I took with me to Sestasha. Okay, yeah, see, now they're DPSing. That's nice. Um, so, when a healer DPSs, sometimes for a new tank it can be scary um, because you're busy doing your rotation, rotating your cooldowns, and you're, you may not be paying as much attention to exactly how fast your HP is dropping, or how long it is taking to drop to a certain level. Um, and so you might think that, you know, your healer isn't healing you enough, but uh, a good healer will be paying attention and they will know. They'll have a feel for the incoming damage and heal you when you need to be healed. So. Even though I've seen myself drop to 200, 300 HP, it's not a big deal. Like, this healer, this healer knows what they're doing, more or less. Archer's not doing bad either. Keeping straight shot up. That's about all you can really ask of them at this level. I guess there's dots too. I haven't really been looking at what dots are on the targets, but... That Thaumaturge though, they need to use more fire spells. <laughs> but, uh, this is not a... This isn't a DPS walkthrough, so I'm not gonna... I'm not really gonna hound them about that. They should be using more fire spells, but I don't, I don't feel like calling them out on it. not directly hindering my ability to tank, so... I might say something to him at the end of the dungeon, if nobody else has said anything by that point. So this void soul counter is... Oh no, wait. Yeah, okay, some of that is physical. I'll go ahead and pop King Flurry. I wasn't sure if he was using spells on me or not. A lot of cooldowns in the game are physical damage only, and if it has anything to do with um, parry or block, it's only going to affect physical damage. So if you notice that you're blocking or parrying hits, that's a sure sign that you're taking physical damage and that those cooldowns can be useful.
pull a few extra things and just make things a little bit more interesting, you know? Now they're using fire spells, but they're using the AoE fire spells. <laughs> they'll figure it out. If they want to learn, they'll learn. Ah, God, let me target the freaking beetle. There we go. That, that that archer's aoeing. So if this black mage, if this thaumaturge was doing like their optimal DPS, this would actually be a very challenging run because I've got two jobs in this party that have uh, a lot of AoE abilities very early on. And you can see that archer aoeing right now, which is good. I mean, they should be. That was actually a pretty, a pretty, pretty painful pull in terms of the outgoing damage. Like, I, I could tell I was making my healer work there a little bit. They're DPSing though, so that's, that is really nice. I've been lucky so far. You see that archer creeping on aggro. That, ar that archer actually seems to be outputting pretty good DPS. That's actually not going to help too much because most of these, most of the damage here is magical. So that was my mistake. It's not really a mistake. It's just a. It's really a misclick more than anything. Oh, hey, nice. So that black mage isn't really good on their uh, DPS rotation, but at least they know when the limit break. That's nice. It's very nice. I approve. I'm totally popping potions and helping this, this white mage out. I don't need to, but, you know. They're doing their they're doing their rotation right, that Thaumaturge now. They're spamming fire spells until they get low in MP and then Blizzard. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Maybe he knows what to do and he's just a little out of it or something. Maybe he's tired. Who knows? As a tank, um, you're gonna run into situations where um, people point out your mistakes in such a way as to 
single you out or scapegoat you for something that could have easily been prevented by the actions of someone else in the party. And as a tank, you're also going to be in a position to see other people's mistakes. And uh, because tanks are so often scapegoated for that kind of thing, and because you will run into a few assholes in the duty finder, and maybe even the party finder, um, I I try, even, even if somebody could be performing their job much better, and I could take it upon myself to rectify that, um, like I said before, I'm a firm believer in the fact that if somebody wants to learn and they want they want to be good, they will be good, regardless of what I say. So I usually only try and teach uh, DPS or healers that I'm pugging with or give them tips if it is actually impeding progress for whatever reason. Like, if they're actually doing something that is causing deaths, or causing wipes, or um, making it difficult for me to hold aggro unnecessarily, that kind of thing. I try and be humble in that respect. See, you, you really don't have to use Savage Blade that much, just alternate between Riot Blade and Flash, and you get it can hold the aggro pretty well. Two casters, shit. That was my bad, I shouldn't have done that. So when you have two casters like that and they're really far apart, if you want them to be next to each other, you've got to run way past one of them in order to pull the other one farther. Yeah, I hope these people don't mind that I'm doing a full clear, I just want the experience, you know? I like to get my bang for my buck when I queue for a dungeon, you know? At least a leveling dungeon. A leveling dungeon, at least. Oh. Totally reset my combo there. Wasn't paying attention. Did I forget to eat food again? I think I did. I'm a dumbass. I gotta stop doing that funny because I told myself I wasn't going to do that this time. It's not too late, fuck it, let me go ahead and eat some food. So now we're in the area where the final boss is, of the dungeon anyway. So 
So we've got a Lancer and a Marauder here, and so they're melee, so I pulled them over to the caster so that they can uh, so that they can all be hit at once. beans the beans that are cool These things are dying pretty fast. I think it's mostly thanks to that Arcanist and the fact that the healer's DPSing. Wish I saw more Fire 2 happening from that Almaturge, but you know, whatever. Can't have everything, I guess. Yeah, he is literally just standing there spamming ice spells and he should not be doing that, but. Maybe at the end of the dungeon I'll say something to him, but... You know. So in Tamtara you need to unlock those little rosary things in order to break this seal and be able to get past this barrier. It's a little bit scary when that happens. There's any number of things that can pull aggro when a fight starts, and if you see them happen, don't panic. It's fine. It's usually just somebody face pulled, and as soon as you generate a little bit of aggro of your own, you'll be fine. Ooh, a lemon break again. Thank you very much, though. Honestly, the archer should be the one limit breaking because I think their limit break is a little bit stronger on a single target. I think I can afford to throw some riot blades in here. White Mage DPS. That Cleric Stance heal. <laughs> I saw that. You know, I saw that one heal landed on me for like 133 and the next one was 244 and it was the same spell. Yeah, that's Cleric Stance. Cleric Stance basically swaps their uh, mind with their intelligence, so their healing spells suck when they have it on, but they're, they do a lot more damage. I already have this because I bought it because I was impatient. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Get up here.
So being that this guy is mostly a caster, only certain cooldowns are going to work on him. But yeah, when those adds show up and you tether to him, you have to kill the adds or else he doesn't take damage. I'm not 100% sure that everybody knows that in this party right now. But, you know. this thing. Oh my god. Yeah. I wonder if they even notice that they're not doing any damage when that happens. They haven't even touched that one yet. Oh man. I want to say something, but I don't want to take my hands off the controller. Yeah, they really need to kill these things, because as long as they're alive, you can't damage the boss. Thanks, good luck, and have fun to you, too. I don't know, honestly, I could have given it to the Archer, too. But I think they were they were doing some good DPS, but I think they were ignoring the ads in the boss fight, and that was really annoying. But, you know. Alright, so actually... I actually got a little bit of time left. I think I'm going to go ahead and go to Old Da and do the level 20 quest for Gladiator. And, um, and we have one more dungeon to do, and then I'll be switching over to Marauder. Um, and that'll be a whole different ball game, really. But, uh, it'll be interesting. See how it works. God damn it. I always forget to do that. Just use the fucking etherite, dude. <laughs> Why? It's only. I only do this in Old Da. No other. I don't do this in any other city. Like, if I'm in Gridania or Limsa, like, I instinctively know to use the Aetherite to go wherever I'm going. But when I'm in Elda, for some reason, I just run away from the Aetherite and I'm like, Oh, where am I going? Where's the thing? Where's the place that I need to be? I, I don't know. I'm an idiot. Alright, what do you got for me? Carnage Sword. I like it. Hopefully I can get this done before the episode runs over too long.
pretty soon I'll be able to join a grand company and then I'll be able to use mounts. And that will be a most welcome addition because I'm really tired of sprinting everywhere. Alright. Yeah, low level tanking can get pretty boring, just spamming two, three buttons the entire time, but I think it's better. Uh, what am I doing here? Search the point of ambush for evidence, okay. So yeah, after the next dungeon, I'm switching over to Marauder, and we'll be staying on Marauder for a good while, um, until just past level 30. So. Let me kill this tortoise real quick. You can see from the little icon, he's on my challenge log, so... By the way, um, I know that there are um, uh, guild hess. Uh, there are special instances that are kind of like tutorials for certain mechanics, for certain like boss and add mechanics and stuff like that, that are like party based. Um, and uh, they're not job tutorials. They're to, they're like boss tutorials, like for specific recurring things I, I don't know and um I haven't decided if I'm really gonna cover them uh, cuz honestly the queue times are probably ridiculous and they don't really teach you anything that I can't teach you in a dungeon so you know Um, and so now I gotta go to What's Her Bucket back at the Gladiators Guild and blah 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 blah. Ethernet, Gladiators Guild. That shield and sword look hilarious with that guy's big old, big old. That is a face. Can't be skipped, goddamn. But nothing would make me happier than to skip it. Okay. Oh, she she's mad. Jesus. Relax, lady. Oh god, I gotta go all the way over there. Son of a bitch. Hmm. <sighs> 
I've started it, so I'm gonna finish it. And uh, yeah, I'm already starting to get really bored of Gladiator. I, I do not like Gladiator or Paladin, because, I mean, while you kind of have to know what you're doing and you have to kind of have some pre-existing knowledge of certain game mechanics in order to tank effectively on Gladiator, effectively on Gladiator, um, early in the game, low levels, it's still really boring. It's painfully boring because you just mash the same two to three buttons for 50 levels and, uh, you know, unless you, unless you're popping a cooldown and it's just, there's very, very little intricacy to the job and, uh, but it's definitely the first tank that you should play because it teaches you to um, it forces you to grasp the fundamentals in a lot of ways. Oh my god. Come here. Finally. I was like, when am I getting my challenge log? Come on. Oh, gotta go all the way down there. Killing me. things to do here. Jesus. Oh yeah, so once you hit level 20, blind gets a, or not blind, what am I saying? Flash gets a trait that blinds things that you hit with it. So it becomes an effective piece of mitigation against uh, when you're tanking a lot of things, like I am right now. Sorry, I need to turn the volume down on the TV, Jesus. Oh, am I not, am I not getting healed? Damn. I must have not been paying attention. Choose your target and finish them. Yeah, okay, it wants you to focus down one target at a time. I wasn't paying attention because I was like, wow, the TV's really loud with all these things hitting me and I don't know. But it feels like the game isn't mixed very well. Oh man, I got Echo. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the shame. Uh, yeah, so uh, when you fail an instance, the game is like, okay. You need a little bit of help, so here's Echo. And what Echo does is it boosts your HP and your damage dealt and healing dealt by a certain percentage. It does not make you take less damage, but it gives you more HP. So, it's something to be mindful of. I bet you can't blind these guys. I thought I was blinding them earlier, but it was really just saying that it's resisted. Jesus. A lot of people. Okay, yeah, they are getting blinded. Yeah, 
the game will tell you what you need to do, and, uh, you know, this being a multiplayer game, you and the game can wait around all day for you to figure it out, but people aren't going to want to wait, so. That's why you pay attention to what's being said to you. finds you in place, which makes it really annoying, because when you're bound, you can't turn, so if you're not facing the right way to land an attack, then it becomes a little bit of a chore. God damn, can we be done now? Jesus. Uh Yeah, gotta go back to the Gladiators Guild. Alright, so we've ran over a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Um, it made sense to go ahead and do this now. That way, next episode we can jump right into the next dungeon, hopefully. Um, so anyway guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut here in a second as soon as I go turn in this quest. Um, next time we will be going to, I believe, is it is uh, Copperbell Mines, I believe. It's, I think that's the next dungeon. Um, and yeah, after that, we'll be switching over to Marauder, which is, in my opinion, uh, a lot more a lot more fun than uh, Gladiator. But also a little bit harder to, to play optimally. Um, the basics are easier, but the more advanced stuff is harder, if that makes any sense. Whereas on Gladiator and Paladin, the basics are really difficult, but the advanced stuff is like mind-numbingly easy. Uh, let's see, what's good, what's good? None of this is good, so I'm going to take the money! Uh, we did get a nice sword, though. This Carnage sword. Pretty legit. That shield we can't equip yet, but this shield's actually better. Slightly. Alright. I'll see you guys next time, and we will go into whatever the next dungeon is. So, until then, take care.